In this video, let's talk about Luminar Neo. This is software that Skylum announced many months ago, September of 2021, if memory serves. Well, it's now February 2022. The software finally came out maybe a week to 10 days uh, before uh, as I'm recording this. And I wanted to let the software sit with me a little bit uh, before I sat down and did some videos about it. So what I'll cover in this video is kind of the higher level stuff, some general thoughts about the product. You know, Is it something that you are going to incorporate into your workflow? What the new features are, things that are missing and uh, things that I find that are a little bit clunky. And so we'll, we'll go through all those different things. If you're looking for specific videos about some of the new features, like how those work, I've got separate ones. I'll, I'll talk about the, those features at a high level here, but in the show notes, there's links to a few other videos that drill into some of the new major features of Neo. But uh, let's go through the, the, the broad brush strokes here in, in this video. First thing I wanted to talk about is really the, the big question, you know, is Luminar Neo good? Should I buy it? That sort of question. Uh, because I'm sure by now, if you're interested in this product or you've already purchased it and you're wanting to learn how to use it, you've watched several other YouTubers out there, maybe a bunch of them, and I'm sure there's the, uh, the, the, the gamut of reactions. Wow, Luminar Neo is the greatest thing ever to Luminar Neo is not useful to me at all. Uh, and I really think that it depends on your perspective, where you're coming from with respect to Skylum products. Uh, let's be very blunt. If you are already a Luminar AI user and you look at Luminar Neo, there's a handful of new things and some things that are missing that are kind of fundamental, I think Luminar Neo is a very disappointing release for a Luminar AI customer. There's really no two ways about that from the way I see it. And uh, we'll get into the new features versus what's missing later in this video. Now, if you are someone who has never used a Skylum product and you're looking at, well, there's Luminar 4 out there, but that really is an end of life product. There's no more work being put into it. I wouldn't want to buy that. AI versus Neo, it will depend on the features that you need. This handful of new AI tools that are in Neo, are those more compelling to you than say some of the things that are missing uh, or, or just, you know, just not quite there yet with Neo? Uh, that's something to measure. Uh, I can't say I'm really up on the latest bundles and how Skylum is packaging the software for a while there. If you're like me, you bought Neo earlier on when they were doing the pre-release stuff and you would get Luminar AI as part of that. So you can start working with the software and you get Neo later. If they're still offering things like that, that's probably still uh, still worth taking a look at. But I think the um, for those of us that have used Luminar AI for a while, Neo's kind of a a, a bummer. It really it really is. You know, um, Skylum oversold and under delivered on what was was uh, talked about when they first announced Neo. It just hasn't all made it into the software and there are some things that are missing. So uh, with that, uh, you know, I, I want folks to understand that that's kind of the position that I see like all things in photography. Depending on where you're coming from, something may be wonderful for you. Something may be quite, uh, you know, average or in this case, disappointing for you. Now with that, let's talk about, uh, let's, let's get into some of the new features. So to me, there are three main key features that came with Luminar Neo. There's Relight AI, Remove Dust Spots, and Remove Power Lines. Those three things, they're all AI powered and overall they're pretty cool. Uh, now let's talk about them individually and I have more detailed videos on each one of these features. Links in the show notes, you can go learn more about each one. But what Relight AI does is help you rebalance the exposure of your photo and has some level of depth analysis so we can control you know, what's closer to the, the lens versus what's farther away. And you can adjust the lighting and you can adjust the warmth and the coolness uh, based on things that are close versus far. And it, it, is, it is nice, uh, it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it does have uh, some really nice qualities to it and speeds up your workflow. So Relight AI, I'll show you a quick example here. Let's just say for this one, I'm gonna uh, enhance this and then Relight AI down in here, I can brighten up the foreground. Then I'll push this really far so you can see that happen. 
Yeah, so the, the tool is recognizing what's in the foreground, what's in the background, and I can control the depth as well. So I can say, well, you know what, I want that to be creeping farther into the distance, or I want that limited to things that are uh, closer, so reducing the amount of depth where that brightness goes. You can see if I push this really far, you get that you get that line. You can see where I'm pushing things around. So you know that's the fundamentals of Relight AI, and there are some advanced settings for doing you know warmth, and it has those uh, those halo controls because anytime you start to push boundaries, warm, cool, high contrast, we might introduce halos. You have some controls for that. Again, I have a separate video to go into the details on that. So that's a pretty good tool, and I think that was largely a hit for Luminar Neo. You know they they delivered on that tool. Now, second feature I mentioned, remove dust spots. Uh, that's another one where they did a good job. And it is you know, a one-click wonder. You open up the erase tool, you click the remove dust spots button, your photos analyze to find spots and removes them. And in the, the tests that I've done, there, there are dust spots that it won't remove, usually when they are touching some other object in the photo. Again, more detailed video will dive into those. You can check the show notes for that. But overall, it speeds up workflow. And especially if you have more than a handful of dust spots, if you've got 10, 12, 15, like really gnarly dust spots, and you know, you're having to click on each one of those each time you're working through a photo, that gets really old really fast. And so this tool does speed that up. So that's the second feature that I think is like marquee for Luminar Neo. They did a good job, it does what it says it would do. The third one, remove power lines. This was the one I was most excited about because it's, you know, it's, um, uh, what's the word for it? You know, it's aggressive. It's, um, it's, you know, it's setting, setting a bar pretty high to be able to, to uh, achieve removing power lines. And this one's hit or miss. You know, I, I call it, you know, lukewarm at best because it removes power lines very well, like ones that are just kind of draped across an empty sky. Um, you know, some good work around the edges of buildings, like things where the AI can be trained to find things. But there are a lot of caveats with what does work and what doesn't work. Again, check the video I have on remove power lines. I go through several different examples of where it worked well, where it didn't work well, where it doesn't work at all. In some cases where it doesn't make sense to even try to use the tool. Uh, so there's there's some significant limitations uh, that I see with remove power lines. So I'm hoping the AIs improve as as Neo improves, but I still think it's a very lofty goal for there to be a single button that will remove all power lines from all different situations in all photos. That's a tough one to uh, to achieve. Now there are a couple of other uh, smaller features that Neo added back in. Uh, you got layers that were added back, you know, so we can add layers. And really, this is not much different than what we have with texture overlays in Luminar AI, which could also open any other image. So it really kind of gives you the same level of uh, layering control that you had with Luminar AI with the exception that you have more tools available to operate on that layer. Once you've added the layer, you have all of the editing tools available that uh, or is different. You know, in, uh, in Luminar AI, we just had uh, some of the basic controls for exposure and, and structure and things like that. So there's a little bit more, but not a whole lot. And the notion of adjustment layers, that has not returned. Uh, where that was from a Luminar 4. That has not returned to Luminar Neo. Uh, and so, um, you know, a couple of other things that, uh, that I think were, were, were added is um, we noticed that it had this edits area. So you can see that you have the tools that I've used already on this particular photo. And notice enhance down here. Well, now I can do a second enhance. And so, you know, I have three tools now. So there's an ability to use the same tool multiple times. That can be interesting for certain things like LUTs or, you know, color blending or, you know, stuff like that, where you want to be able to use multiple tools multiple times. But I have to say the way that it's been implemented, I'm not entirely sold on. And that kind of brings me to the next section of the video. Um, I'm going to come back to this thing here with... Uh, 
you know what's um, what's a little bit clunky. But let me talk next about what's missing from Luminar Neo. So what is missing from Luminar Neo? Uh, there's a few things uh, you'll notice when you look through the tools, uh, all the way through the tools here. You don't see clone stamp. You don't see the dodge and burn tool and there's really not any clone stamp options in the erase tool you know so those things are missing you know there's no clone stamp and that honestly is quite helpful when you are doing things that involve erasing sometimes you need to maintain certain patterns certain uh, you know repeating uh, patterns like in you know tile or edges of buildings those types of things that is just not in the tool right now the big one that kind of floored me there's no undo button. There's no undo. That this boggles me. I don't understand why there's no undo in the tool. Yeah, I can unwind things and remove tools and remove sliders back there, but a simple undo option is not there. At least I haven't found it anywhere. And you know, it's in the edit menu usually, right? You go up in there and then edit, and there's nothing there. So um, you know, go figure. Uh, one other thing that is missing that I, I think this is kind of a, a pretty big one. Um, let's see. Let me pick something that makes sense here. Let's do landscape. Um, let's just crank something up here. In our masking area, we have a paint mask. That's it. There's no gradient. There's no radial. I was hoping for the return of luminosity masks. That's from Luminar 4. It didn't make it into Luminar AI. Those things aren't there. Are they coming? I hope so. Probably. Maybe. They're not there right now, you know. So if you are a uh, person who does uh, masking and you want to be able to use masking tools that do gradients, radials, it's not in the product right now. There is promise of AI-based masking tools, and maybe that's why these things aren't here. Um, I, I don't honestly know, but I, uh, what I do know, it's not in the product today. Uh, so that's um. That's kind of the rundown of things that are missing, and there's there's uh, there's a few there that I think are are serious steps back from Luminar AI that um, you know should should be there. Like you know, I dodge and burn, can I work around that? Yeah, I guess I can use the develop tool of a couple of times maybe, and you know just playing with exposure, and I have a paintbrush, but that is not a particularly smooth workflow. So so these are some some disappointing misses in Luminar Neo. Uh, the last thing I want to cover with uh, with Luminar Neo is there's some stuff I just find to be kind of just clunky workflow, and it has to do with the ability to use multiple tools. So let me just run through an example for you here. You get the idea of what I'm talking about. Normally coming in to do an editing session, you go into Enhance, say, and it's like, all right, I want to push that up there, enhance my sky a little bit. Uh, where's structure? I want to add some structure. And then I look at things and go, uh, you know, um, it looks like I pushed enhance a little bit too far. Uh, the, the colors are just popping too much. Let me go back and change that. So I go back into enhance and I see this. And you'll pause and go, well, why can't I go and adjust those sliders? You can, but they're kind of buried in the interface. You have to go over into edits. I have to go down to enhance. And as soon as I do that, I lose my structure and then like, all right, well now I can back off my accent some and then I can go back up to my structure and have that reintroduced. I can't work with multiple tools and seeing the sum total results. And I have to guess that was done for performance reasons or maybe it's related to this ability to use the same tool multiple times, but not being able to adjust enhance while also seeing my structure and imagine if I had six other tools here that to me is quite annoying I, I want that capability and I don't have it another thing that is clunky to me and this is coming from the perspective of someone who's worked with Luminar for several iterations of the software stuff moved around again Right, you know, we had in previous versions of Luminar either a raw or a develop, and then things became the light tool in Luminar AI. And now I don't have light again. It's it's develop, and uh, okay, things are down in here now. Optics is buried back underneath develop. They used to be down here in the professional area, 
and you know the the interface change the presets are on the right instead of the left these are all smaller cosmetic things uh, you know uh, what else um, crop is now crop AI it used to be uh, composition AI but if you're looking for composition AI this is where it is now just stuff changed again you know each time Skylum iterates on Luminar they're redesigning the interface yet again as opposed to giving us a consistency where it's not like I have to relearn the entire tool but there's enough where I have to spend time hunting around to find the thing that I'm looking for just because it's not in the same place it was last time. It's not like it's fundamentally changed. You know, uh, exposure is still exposure. You know, whether you stuff it in a light tool, you stuff it in a develop tool, it's, it doesn't really change the nature of what it's doing. Uh, but it's, like I said, it's just, it, it makes things clunky. It makes things cumbersome. It's an uh, it's it's friction for me to start using the new tool. So you know, that's kind of some of the stuff that uh, as a, a longer time Luminar user, and if you're in that camp, you're going to be graded a little bit by the fact that things moved around yet again. So those are my thoughts around Luminar Neo. I didn't talk about everything. Uh, for example, I didn't talk about Luminar Share. There's a, a mobile app where you can have uh, Luminar on your desktop, automatically send things to your mobile phone. Uh, that's just not part of my workflow. Uh, I didn't talk about the catalog at all. Uh, I do not advocate using Skylum products anymore as your main catalog. Uh, I, I drew that line at Luminar AI. And uh, I think currently Luminar Neo is an island unto itself. I don't know if there is a catalog migration from Luminar AI yet. It's been talked about. It's been uh, promised, I believe, on a roadmap. But I don't know if it exists. I use Luminar as a plugin to Lightroom, to Photoshop, to On One, to other tools as an adjunct editor. So catalog wise, I don't advocate it. I'll put a link in the show notes to a post I did a while ago about why I don't anymore. So I'm not covering those aspects of it. I'm just talking about kind of the core editing of it. I hope this gives you a flavor of what Neo is, what it isn't, uh, and I will I will say, the tools themselves work well, uh, you know. And if you are starting with Luminar for the first time, you know, Luminar Neo worth a look, worth a strong look. But if you're coming from Luminar AI and you haven't purchased yet, I really got to say, you know, you might want to sit back and wait a little bit longer. Let the tools catch up with one of the features that were important to you that didn't make it in from Luminar AI. Maybe some of the masking tools or things like that and then make the cut over. So uh, again, I hope this uh, this helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, maybe I can answer it, maybe I can't, but go ahead and leave comments. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.